I reserve my time. Mm -hmm. The gentlewoman reserves. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Madam Speaker, I'd, I yield now one minute to our majority leader, Mr. Hoyer, who along with the rest of the leadership continues this effort to address affordability. The gentleman is recognized. I thank the uh, speaker, uh, the gentlelady from California, and I thank the gentleman and the chairman of the committee. Uh, and I want to rise, first of all, this, this is not price control. It's limiting uh, the purchaser on a price, but the companies are still going to uh, charge what they're going to charge, and somebody's going to have to pay, and Medicare is going to have to pay. Uh, so it does increase the cost, but it's not price control on the pharmaceuticals. Uh, and uh, I want to say that we have a bill, of course, that will allow negotiation in Medicare, just as the VA does. Um, Negotiation is not price control. Uh, negotiation is saying, I'm going to buy a lot of your product and I want a better price. Uh, a lot of us do that. Uh, we call it Sam's Club or uh, some other club that we go to and we buy large volumes and get a cheaper price than our poorer friends who just buy it one at a time. So I'm for this bill. It's a good bill. Madam Speaker, I want to thank Representatives Craig, Guilty, Kildy, and McBath for their leadership on this bill. They have long been champions of making health care and prescription medications accessible and affordable for all Americans. More than one in three Americans are at high risk of developing diabetes, and over 37 million Americans have it. A lot of those folks can't do without it. They don't have an option. And insulin, which has been on the market for decades and is not protected under patent, uh, and the development prices have long ages ago been amortized. To treat their condition, the people who have diabetes must rely on insulin injections to regulate their blood sugar levels. Now, if you have no option of not buying a product, those who sell that product can put the price wherever, if it means your life. A lack of insulin can lead to insulin shock, diabetes coma, kidney failure, and death. It's unacceptable that this life-saving medication is priced out of the reach for many who need it. Because it costs so little to produce. This is not a mechanism that uh, uh, it has to charge these prices because it take, took so much uh, to produce it. It costs only $10 to manufacture a month's supply. Yet, a month's supply can cost hundreds of dollars. However, with out-of-pocket costs as high as over $600 for a 40-day supply. Now, if you extrapolate uh, 40 days, that's 10 days more than a month. Uh, so that's a third more. So let's say it costs $13 to produce. $600. Why? Because if they don't have it, they die. So all we're saying is, let's make sure this is affordable so people can sustain their lives and their health. Many Americans have resorted to rationing for skipping doses, by skipping doses uh, of their insulin because they can't afford it. The legislation before us would cap the out-of-pocket price of insulin of $35 a month. Let me again remind you that's 350 percent of the cost of producing it. This would ease the burden of skyrocketing prices and impossible choices. Americans should not have to choose between paying rent or food or whatever uh, or paying for their insulin. As a matter of fact, they can't make that choice. They need both. They need to eat, and they need to live, and insulin is so often uh, the way they assure that outcome. The prices will continue to rise unless we choose to act today. Ma Madam Speaker, House Democrats already voted for this measure once, and Republicans already voted against it. So I guess we don't have any surprise of what's going to happen here. The Republicans are going to say to those who are using insulin, you're on your own. You're on your own. We're not going to worry about it. 
And we're going to say, we're here to help. We're here to make sure you don't get ripped off. We're here to make sure that you have the medicine that you absolutely need to survive. We voted for this measure as part of the Build Back Better Act in November. We made a promise to the American people that we would address the cost of prescription drugs, and we honored that price. Republicans said no. They said once again, consumer, you need insulin, you're on your own. They voted for higher drug prices. They voted for the status quo, where many Americans have to choose between life-saving insulin and putting food on the table. Today, my fellow colleagues, there's an opportunity to vote for, to save lives and to provide a lifeline for millions of Americans with diabetes. I urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, do not say to the American people, you're on your own. Tell them we are here to help. Vote to help them. Vote to ensure that they will be able to afford a drug they need to protect themselves from death. My colleagues join me in voting to bring prices down across our economy and our health care system. Join me in protecting Americans' ability to access life-saving medication that prevents needless suffering, extends life, and provides a higher quality of living. Join me in voting for the Affordable Insulin for All bill. Again, I want to thank Ms. Craig, Mr. Kildee, Ms. McBath, the chairman of this committee, and all those who brought this bill to the floor and urge my colleagues, don't say you're on your own. Say we're by your side and we're here to help. I yield back the balance of my time.